Hello, my name is Mike Eagley. I'm the CTO of TempoDB. TempoDB is a time series database service. Today, on our whiteboard session, I want to answer a question that we get from a lot of our customers. How do, I, how do you optimize a relational database for time series data? And it's a great question. And it's actually the core of why we started the company. So let's get started. So I'm going to do a quick review. Um, time series data is a sequence of time stamp value pairs. And we talk about series. Um, and each series would be one of those sequences. So for instance, if I, had, if I was measuring temperature, and I had two temperature sensors, that would correspond to two series, series one, series two. Um, so how would I store this in a relational database? Well, the simplest way to do it is with a single table. Uh, this table has three columns. First column is t the timestamp, value, and some sort of identifier for the series. Call it series ID. And to store this data, um, each row represents a single data point for a particular series. For instance, T11, E11 for series one. And since we're measuring this data over time, these rows could have different values for different series. So the, the next row could have a value for series two. Two one, two one. Series two, and again we could have another value for series one, which would be this. So what's great about this is it's really simple. And you can use a lot of the SQL um, queries that you are familiar with. For instance, if I wanted to, re if you wanted to read out uh, a month's worth of data, where the where you got the average daily average, you could use a simple group by to do that computation. So this is great. Um, but it has some problems. Usually with time series data, you want to uh, query it order by time. And in order to do that in a relational database, you need an index on the time column. And so that's great when the data set's small. But as it grows and you get above 100 million rows, um, the index can grow to the point where it won't fit into memory. And once that happens, the queries get a lot slower. So one way you can uh, leave that is by a slight optimization. So Again, you can use a single, single table, but instead of storing one data point per row, you can store a full day's worth. So this table layout, again, has some sort of series identifier. Second column is a date. And then a, a series of columns that represent the data points. So let's say we wanted to measure uh, data once per minute. We would have 1,440 columns, one, one per minute of the day, in this table. So T1, T2, all the way to T1440. And then to store the data, look similarly, we put a series one, some date, maybe New Year's Day, and then some values. And again, series two could come down here. Now, this is a great optimization. Um, it solves the indexing problem that we had before. Uh, the data is growing a lot slower. It's growing one row per series per day. So you don't get into this indexing problem um, quickly. However, it has a few problems. Um, one of the big ones is that you can't use the SQL group by um, queries anymore. So all that aggregation code needs to move into your application. Second problem is you can't change the sampling period. So when we designed this table, we kind of hard-coded in the fact that we wanted to start measuring once per minute. If I wanted to measure once per second, you would have to add more columns. Now this is difficult to do on a production, online on a production system. And for all the previous data you had, you would have missing values, which would, which would be nulls in the database, and you'd have to deal with that in the application code. Um, so as you can see, it is possible to optimize a relational database for time series data. However, the, a lot of the optimizations introduce a lot of complexities and challenges. Um, by storing this data as a stream instead of a table, we can eliminate a lot of these challenges. In the next session, we'll talk about how we store time series data as a stream and the benefits of doing so. Um, if you found this whiteboard session useful, you can subscribe to our channel and also follow the series on blog.tempodb.com. There's some links in the description. Again, I'm Mike Gigli, CTO of TempoDB. 
Thank you for watching our video.